impressed that the imam uh, remembered my background when I shared with him a long time ago. Um, what you just heard now was 1996, February 28th, uh, in Princeton. In, in Princeton. Um, and also, um, I, I didn't take note of that up until now, really, while we're doing this. He mentioned my name three times, whatever that means. You know, sometimes I forget my own name. He said, Mustafa El-Amin, Mustafa El-Amin, Mustafa El-Amin. But here, inshallah, we want to get to a point, um, just briefly get to a point where a statement from the imam, and he used a language um, um, concerning some work that I had done of preserve, that this preserves uh, our history of Islam in America. And, you know, most of what I uh, put out, I always say documenting, preserving, and sharing our history. But I just want to show a little more uh, of this here. Actually, he was from the Nation of Islam. He was a young man in the Nation of Islam, a teenager, in fact. Um, so I believe that he was only about maybe 18 or 19 uh, when the leader of the Nation of Islam passed in five. That was my father, Elijah Muhammad. Um, and he wrote a book recently on the difference between the Nation of Islam and Islam. And, his name is uh, Mustafa El Amin. Mustafa El Amin. Mustafa El Amin. I wish we had that book here. I would, I would just give it to you. It would save me a lot of time, and you a lot of time. Uh, but I would... Yeah, I was Robert 105X when I uh, was in the Nation of Islam when I joined in the early 70s, uh, Temple Number 25 in Newark. Um, and I'm just sharing this, and I'm honored, and as I always say, I try to help the community, and as I always try to help the imam, and, and you know, even this year, going back to here, you say, you know, he wish he had the book with him, to save him a lot of trouble, and, um, and what I'm, what I'm going to get to real quick is, 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 it's the book, but it's not so much the book, what I'm going to get to, it's, it's the language that the imam used, um, uh, when he called me and and um, and asked to advertise the book, a statement for that. But like I said, it's, it's, it's the book, but that's not my emphasis. It's the language that he used we, we're just trying to get to also. And and I want you to listen also where you say, I study. And I encourage everyone to study also. <laughs> He prints all his books, and he has studied the language of nature of Islam and uh, my language, and he's written on the two, the nature of Islam and now. Uh, I think he's a good person to have it. Have you? Have you? Language sensitive 
meeting um, and uh, my name came up and this is what the imam has said I think this was June or July 2000 but here and we want to get to that he said he has studied um, the imam's language and the old language and written on it too but study and I, and I encourage us always uh, to study and, um, and and preserve what we have from uh Actually, he was from the Nation of Islam. He was a young man in the Nation of Islam, a teenager, in fact. Um, so I believe that he was only about maybe 18 or 19 uh, when the leader of the Nation of Islam passed in 1975. That was my father, Elijah Muhammad. Um, and he wrote a book recently on the difference between the Nation of Islam and Islam. And, uh, Mustafa El Amin, Mustafa El Amin, Mustafa El Amin. I wish we had that book here. I would, I would just give it to you. It would save me a lot of time and you a lot of time. Uh, but I would be to... Yes, yes, yes. There is a brother from, uh, actually he was from the Nation of Islam. He was a young man in the Nation of Islam, a teenager in fact. Um, so I believe that he was only about maybe 18 or 19. Uh, when the leader of the Nation of Islam passed, uh, that was my father, Elijah Muhammad. Um, and he wrote a book. Uh, his name is uh, Mustafa El Amin. Mustafa El Amin. Mustafa El Amin. Uh, yes. yes, there is a brother from, uh, actually, he was from the Nation of Islam. He was a young man in the Nation of Islam, a teenager, in fact. Um, so I believe that he was only about maybe 18 or 19 uh, when the leader of the Nation of Islam passed in 1975. That was my father, Elijah Muhammad. Um, and he wrote a book recently on the difference between the Nation of Islam and Islam. And his name is uh, Mustafa El Amin. Mustafa El Amin. Mustafa El Amin. I wish we had that book here. I would, I would just give it to you. It would save me a lot of time, and you a lot of time. Uh, but I would, yes, yes, there is a brother from, uh, actually he was from the Nation of Islam. He was a young man in the Nation of Islam, a teenager in fact. Um, so I believe that he was only about maybe 18 or 19 uh, when the leader of the Nation of Islam passed in 1975. That was my father, Elijah Muhammad. Um, it's uh, Mustafa El Amin. Mustafa El Amin. Mustafa El Amin. Um, Muhammad and Mustafa El Amin. And he has studied the language of the nation of Islam and my language. And he's written on the two in the nation of Islam. And I think he's a good person to have. Have you? Have so again, listen uh, carefully um, when you when I play this piece again, emphasizing study. Say so he studied that, and um, and that's important for us as individuals uh, studying Quran, studying our religion, and for us as imams in particular. But I'm gonna uh, um, play another. Um, clip in a different situation where he will on a different subject where he say I, I studied okay now all this again is documenting preserving and sharing our future our history right and also trying to encourage us in some way 
from this then come back before we close when Imam was talking about another subject uh, ancient Egypt and he mentioned that I have studied that as well um, so I just want to show that uh, real quick and emphasizing um, for us to study you know and uh, that was our relationship I mean I'm like many others took every word in his commentary and everything um, very serious and as I, the last thing I posted, um, I said, I read to you a letter where I say, Brother Imam, I didn't just study your commentary. I studied how you operated, how you, how you move, how you did things. Very strategic man, very wise man, and um, w w was honored to have him among us and to continue to study what he was doing and, uh, as a motivation and a help for myself and, and our community. So you're going to hear him mention that I studied ancient Egypt, and this was in Newark, but what really was interesting about this is he mentions this, um, which I wrote about this also, um, and then he also go back to the book, What's the Difference? So he connect me with uh, studying ancient Egypt and studying that, okay? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> so... When you go there to Egypt and see its monuments, see how it looked back then. See, now you go and see those relics, you know, like, a, like, like you're looking at the, the prehistoric age, something from the prehistoric age or something, you know. But it wasn't prehistory, it was Egyptian history. And you know, it was a mystery. Mysterious. It was a mysterious culture. They played on mystery, the power of mystery, the power of the unknown. Some, uh, some of you have studied it, just like uh, a few of you, Pat, just like uh, Imam Mustafa al Amin, the author. See, he used the word study. Let me play it again. Have to come under the influences of that culture. And you know, it was a mystery. Mysterious. It was a mysterious culture. They played on mystery, the power of mystery, the power of the unknown. Some, uh, some of you have studied it, just like uh, a few of you, Pat, just like uh, Imam Mustafa al Amin, the author. And you know, it was a mysterious, it was a mysterious culture. They played on mystery, the power of mystery, the power of the unknown. Some, uh, some of you have studied it, just like uh, a few of you, Pat. Just like uh, Imam Mustafa al Amin, the author uh, of. So now um, we have wrote this book, and I had given it to him, and um, I wrote it in 1988. Um, and we also, as he, as you know, we had went to Egypt. So, but the word I'm, I want you to get is when he when he say uh, he studied. And just like I study Quran and try to study um, what I can and encourage us to study Quran. Uh, yes. <laughs> so when you go there to Egypt and see its monuments, see how it looked back then. See, now you go and see those relics. You know, like, a, like, like you're looking at the, the prehistoric age, something from the prehistoric age or something. You know, but it wasn't prehistory, it was Egyptian history. <laughs> it was the glorious pages of Egyptian history, you know. <laughs> it was the glorious pages of Egyptian history, you know, uh, before Islam. So uh, you see these huge figures of human beings, and they're Egyptians. They're in the Egyptian dress. 
and they're very huge. You go and you, the doors, the door look like a giant should walk through the doors. And then they have these huge figures of the Egyptians. And that their people believe that their pharaohs are gods. The pharaohs are gods. Now what is very interesting and noteworthy is in the same breath, at the same place um, in 1995, I think that was October 4th or 5th, as he mentioned in Egypt, because he's teaching on Cairo, where Cairo comes from, um, Kahara, where Lars al Kahara, overwhelming. As he mentions that, then he go ahead on and he continues and mention how I wrote on what's the difference. I'm going to play that now again. So he makes a connection with Cairo with one of the attributes of Allah. It's the root meaning. It just indicates, indicates that the, uh, this a meaning derived from the same basic root letters of the same character, the basic characters. Wahidul Kahar. So Cairo, ka, Kahira. This word, Kahira. It means the city that so overwhelmed you when you came into it that you were just subdued. You were subdued. So they translate this this is a subduer, right? This attribute of God. Is the, is, is his name is the subduer. Subduer means that he overcomes you, he subdues you. He, 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 he just uh, overpowers you, overcome you. And you just have to just yield and conform to his pressure, you see. So that's what Cairo was called. Cairo was called Kahira, a feminine uh, form of the word. And it means that that overwhelms you, subdues you, overpowers you and you can't do anything about it. Now, it was a, an environment, a cultural environment. We just mentioned culture earlier. It was a cultural environment that was so powerful in its uh, uh, power to influence the way you think and feel that it would just subdue your mind, and your mind would have to come under the influences of that culture. And you know it was a mysterious, it was a mysterious culture. They played on mystery, the power of mystery, the power of the unknown. Some, uh, some of you have studied it, just like uh, a few of you perhaps, just like uh, Imam Mustafa Al-Amin, the author uh, of... Uh, uh, the nation of Islam, uh, and uh, Islam, that so clearly showed us the difference between the nation of Islam and the real religion of Islam, with that book. I recommend it to anybody that didn't read it. If you have any questions about uh, what was back then and what is real, what is Islam, you should read that book. It will help you out a lot. Uh, yes. <laughs> so... When you go there to Egypt and see its monuments, see how it looked back then. See, now you go and see those relics, you know, like, a, like, like you're looking at the, the prehistoric age, something from the prehistoric age or something, you know. But it wasn't prehistory, it was Egyptian history. <laughs> it was the glorious pages of Egyptian history, you know, uh, before Islam. So I appreciate, and I just wanted you to see how, in the same breath, he acknowledged that I had studied Egypt, and I, you know, I actually wrote in this book, Freemasonry, Ancient Egypt, and Islamic Destiny. And then uh, the way he did it, you know, in case you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about the brother who wrote, uh, what's the difference? Uh, who studied the two, the the two, his language and the language of the Nation of Islam, and wrote on it. And you know, it was a mystery. Mysterious. It was a mysterious culture. They played on mystery, the power of mystery, the power of the unknown. Some, uh, some of you have studied it, just like uh, a few of you perhaps, just like uh, Imam Mustafa Al-Amin, the author uh, of uh, uh, the Nation of Islam uh, and uh, Islam. That so clearly showed us the difference between the Nation of Islam and the real religion of Islam, 
with that book. I recommend it to anybody that didn't read it. If you have any questions about uh, <coughs> what was back then and what is real, what is Islam, you should read that book. It will help you out a lot. Uh, so now I'm going to shift back to that and then we'll close. Okay, just wanted to, to show, let you hear where you say, I studied, you know, putting the emphasis, I'm putting the emphasis on studying. sisters i'm just gonna now show you um and just go over the statement that the imam gave me in 1991 um, um when we wrote the book what's the difference and i told you before he he called me i had sent the book out you know and he called me and um and expressed how joyful he was and how much he appreciated the fact that i wrote this book and how helpful it was to him and would be to our entire community and I remember when I met him in 87, I said I wanted to help the cause of Islam uh, from my heart. And so when he called and said this was a big help, and then he, he, call, he called and said, I want to give you this statement. So we're just going to look at this statement real quick, okay? Okay, so this is uh, June 7, 1991, although I think um, this might have been the second ad that I, that I ran. And I want you to see the, the entire Muslim journal. He said, you know, he gave me the statement, told me to go ahead and advertise. But I want you to see the whole, uh, see uh, what he had here, had me to be put on the top and allowed that to happen, right? Now, just real quickly, uh, you know, look, looking, looking at this, OK, and he appreciated that I just I didn't do a lot of criticism. I just put what we what the nation of Islam taught and what Islam taught without a whole lot of criticism of those who left or anything like that. Although, of course, we mentioned it now here here. And I see even more now this book. And this is what he told me to write it down. He called me and gave me this. This book by Mustafa El Amin. Listen very much is an excellent contribution, help right there, Allahu Akbar, to the, 
to the Muslim community and the broader community. You hear that? It's an excellent contribution to the Muslim community and the broader community. But listen to this language. This new publication helps to do what? To preserve the history of our progress as Muslims in America. And you see, I always say, uh, documenting, preserving, and sharing our history. Now, just reflect on this. The way he put this, even though, you know, it was to show what was the difference with what Farrakhan was teaching when he had left and all of that, but, but it was even bigger than that. You see, whether they stayed together or, or, or didn't leave, or if they come around fully to the sooner or later, or whatever, his point is it, it, the history cannot be erased. In other words, this was our history, whether they picked up the nation and kept going or whether it was everybody stayed together, what he, what he used very strategically, and that's how the book was written. Not a lot of criticism. It was, he said, this new publication helps to preserve, no matter whatever else happened, that was what we believe, what the nation of Islam believed for 40 some years, right? The, this new publication helps to preserve the history of our progress as Muslims in America. What he's saying, it preserves what we were about, what we believed in before, et cetera, et cetera, and how Allah allowed us to progress in coming to the Sunnah of Muhammad, to coming to the universal teachings of Islam based on Quran and life example of Muhammad the Prophet. So you see, so in looking at it now, this book by Mustafa El Amin, and listen to his language, and he took it everywhere. And, you know, it's 91, you know, and, and, and he didn't tell me to write this book. That's another thing he liked. But he didn't tell me to write this book. He didn't know I was going to write it. And I sent it to him, just like all the other things. Just like when I, when I stood up. I didn't, he didn't know it was going to happen, but he know I'm a worker. And I don't just deal with gossip and talk or whatever. Like we used to say, you talk to talk, but do you walk to walk? So I was just trying to help. I, I didn't know the imam was going to respond like this. But anyway, this book by Mustafa El Amin is an excellent contribution. Listen to the Muslim community and the broader community. It was helping them to understand what was the difference. This new publication helps to preserve the history of our progress as Muslims in America. And we moved off of that, and then, you know, I, I was invited to speak, and he was there at Chicago State University. And I can tell you now, you know, years later, I'm older and, you know, and still working hard. But you see more, and it, and it touches me even more, because our first meeting, that's what I said I wanted to do. I wanted to help the cause of Islam. And, um, and so, alhamdulillah, and bringing that together, and you see him talking about the book, this, this is not telling everybody to get the book, although I think it's still very relevant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm just presenting to you, documenting, preserving, and sharing the, the history, but also looking at the depth of, of, of what, what it's about. It's about preserving the history of our progress as Muslims in America. Very important. Uh, excuse me, I, you know, I, I get excited anyway when, when I start doing this, especially when I'm going from the Quran or is here, so we're going to try to wrap this up, alhamdulillah. I hope that it's helpful in some way, and this is how we wanted to bring it to the conclusion with what the imam was saying, that study, I studied that, and, and we did something based on studying, and uh, just just for, for real, from the, from the heart, trying to help, you know, and I thank Allah that we was able to help and trying to continue to help and do what you can do um, in your place, brothers and sisters, you know, and I'm going to identify who you are, know yourself and be yourself. So my intention was to help. And I hadn't, you know, um, uh, told him, mom, I was going to do this or anything. He asked me, I mean, I was in the community with you all and I saw what, 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 what was needed. And, um, you know, we, we went on and, and did what, uh, what we could do. Oh, and I'm going to chuckle here. So, you know, when the imam came to Newark in 2003 and told me what had happened, what, why he resigned, you know he didn't have to tell me to step forward. 
you know, I did what I could. And even at the time I said it, I didn't know how I was going to do it. But alhamdulillah, Allah guided us, got our, our uh, sincere heart. And this is 91. And just two years before that, in 89, he had gave me a statement um, um, concerning my sincerity and said, publish this here. I know Mustafa el and I'm impressed with him and his sincerity. And then, um, here's even an original page. You see, January 27, 1989, I know Mustafa el and I am very impressed with him and his sincerity. And, you know, he told me, go ahead, you know, you advertise, put this on your ad with your books, which I had written, uh, Ibrahim, and that, uh, in 88, you see, these books here, with his approval to uh, to put that with that. So it was all, all about helping. As long as you're sincere and you trust in Allah, Allah will guide you, brothers and sisters, okay? And honestly, I think the best way you can demonstrate genuine leadership uh, as uh, is is to live it and encourage people to be sincere, and uh, stay with Quran, you know, and have faith and trust in Allah. You know, uh, brothers that I know, they tell me I should write a book about my life. Uh, even Imam Muhammad, um, he was in Jersey, I think it was Free Haven, and I had a chance to tell him one time. That you know the books I had written, Abraham and the other ones, that I had just wrote them on an ironing board. <laughs> I did, you know, all night, during the midnight all, I wrote them on an ironing board. He said, he looked at me, he said, you know, you need to write a book about your own life, about yourself, you know. And that was a long time ago. And um, so here I'm sharing things, but really hoping it can help people, you know, help it help our community as well. Alhamdulillah, I just want to play something, uh, just just something that touches me. You know, the first time I met the imam and I expressed that I wanted to help uh, Islam. And he said what he said, that what I was doing was a help to the community. And then, uh, actually, you know, to see this in 91 and him saying, no, this is a major contribution. Because that's, that's where it was coming from all the time. And that's where it still is and will remain, inshallah. It helped. And I bless you with great understanding. I know you have great understanding. And I, I'm just overwhelmed. But from my heart, I really want to try to make a contribution to the advancement of our Islam here in America. And I really want to do my best. And I appreciate any advice. I know you said very safe. <laughs> yes, it is. That is uh, my desire to uh, have this opportunity to be uh, to meet you in person. Uh, and as I said, uh, uh, the... Uh, presentation that you made, uh, my opinion is uh, very, very impressive. Uh, and uh, these are my first words meeting Imam Muhammad in 1987 in um, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, uh, New Medina. And hopefully one, one day, inshallah, I'll have some food. And so I say I did talk to our leader at that time, you know. Uh, but brother, brother Imam, I just like to thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the time. Allah, God bless you with success and good health. And God bless you with great understanding. I know you have great understanding. And I, I'm just overwhelmed. But from my heart, I really want to try to make a contribution to the advancement of our Islam here in America. And I really want to do my best. And I appreciate any advice. I know you said very safe. <laughs> yes, it is. That is uh, my desire to uh, have this opportunity to, be, uh, to meet you in person. So you see how important the history is. I didn't even realize that I had actually used the word uh, contribution. And then when he, you see how it goes. And then now when, when we do this book in 91, he says it's an excellent uh, contribution to the Muslim community and to the broader community. So we connected it up, and I didn't even know that until the night that that was the word I used uh, when I first met him so long ago. And then he says, you know, he wanted the opportunity to meet me in person. And he had has read my book and then saw um, the presentation I had with the, the Masons, et cetera.
So this is why it's so important to document, uh, preserve your history, whether you do it with a camera or you write it down, whatever way you can. I was other than Imam Muhammad, I was one of the first ones along with to actually uh, do the videos of my talks and presentations and, and stuff. The videos way back, way back then, or my would get the videos, but I would actually uh, have my programs uh, video tape. And, and preserving, I got so many pictures like anyone else, but we want to wrap this up. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. And he has studied the language of the nation of Islam and uh, my language. And he's written on the two, the nation of Islam and not. Uh, so I think he'd be a good person to have it. Have you? Uh, language sensitive person. Thank you. 